Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So I'm really excited to share this one with you because I know a lot of you are aspiring to play at higher levels of the game at some point in your careers. And if that's true, it's more than likely that you will encounter some kind of tryout trial experience at some point in your careers and they can be a bit intimidating. I do get a lot of messages asking how to prepare for a trial, how to actually go about the trial to impress coaches and so I wanted to make a video to kind of give you some advice and put you in the best situation to impress these coaches and today my club is actually hosting an open tryout here in Rochester so I'm going to go along at least going to show you a glimpse of what goes on at these trials and I might have to get involved in the trial itself because coach sent the players an email. He wants the current players to come along, get involved in the trial so he can actually compare the trialist to the level of the players he already has signed. It's just a lot easier for him to evaluate these new players coming in. So it should be a really cool experience and then we're going to come back and actually talk in depth about trials. How to get trials, how to impress our trials, everything related to trials we're going to try and cover in this video. But we're going to get over to the training facility now. I'm excited to show you what an open trial looks like. So let's get over there. Alright, so uh, welcome to the 2019 NPSL Combine. One of the, the staples that you know we're all about out, um, is finding local talent that's going to uh, be stars in their community. We're excited for you guys to be here to showcase yourself, you know, outside, um, and then put your best foot forward. And hopefully, be a part of the organization. We'll go through a warm up. We're going to do a technical in groups of three. We're we'll do a passing pattern. We're going to do possession. Then we're going to go to a big field. You'll hear it all year long. Simple, quick. Simple, quick. Again, less is more. Right? Play simple and play quick, and you, you'll actually catch my eye. If you're sitting there trying to take everybody on, and, and you're losing possession of the ball, and you keep pissing it away, they're not going to be a good thing for you. There's no pressure on you. The only pressure that's on you is that the pressure you're putting on yourself. All right, let's go. go <laughs> Searching for a longer day People feeling like the light has just come We must never stop the way Birds chirping and I hear my name Grasping to a life Life is happy but it's so insane We must merely make a start Savannah, I'm coming home. Savannah, we'll never be alone. Savannah, the beauty of the world. Savannah, let's all take a ride. Savannah. Look at the athleticism of the player, but I always tell you know players to play simple, play quick. So when I came in, didn't want to do too much, kept it simple. You always come with a positive mind because if you come in, you have negativity. Obviously, the coaches are going to see that. Specifically, when you're doing a tryout, you don't want to try too hard. Don't try to come in and do anything that you aren't capable of. Just keep playing the simple way how you always have, and things will work out the best way. Savannah, the beauty of the world, Savannah. 
right guys, I really hope you enjoyed seeing what an open trial looks like and they pretty much always set up a very similar way from my experience. So if you've never been to a trial before, what usually happens is you'll go over to the facility wherever the trial is being held, you'll get given a shirt when you register that has a number on it unique to you for that day and then you'll go about the trial and then as you're trialing out, coaches are walking around with clipboards, they have your name and your number on it written down, they have everybody there and if you do something that catches their eye they might write some feedback next to your name and usually the coaches gather at the end of that trial and if they've all spotted the same players or player they usually bring that player in for a further assessment in the future if they've impressed on the day. So that's pretty much how it goes and as far as the format usually start with a bit of a warm-up then you move into a technical activity just so you can get your technique down so the coach can see how technical you are. Then you move into a small possession based game or maybe a small sided match just so the coaches can see how you're using the space, how your first touch is, how you're passing, checking over your shoulder, all the fundamentals basically that are required to be a footballer. Then you usually end the trial with a full match game just so the coaches can see you playing in your natural position, seeing your movements in a match, seeing what you have to offer. So that's pretty much how an open trial goes. So if you're looking to go to one in the future, that's what you can expect. So before we dive really deep into everything trial related in terms of how to go about getting a trial, how to actually conduct yourself on the day of that trial to give yourself the best chance of impressing the coach. I just want to give you a quick overview of what the current football system looks like here in the US to give you a bit of context on what level my team's playing at as well. So over here I'm going to put a pyramid to show you the different levels of football competition here in the US. You can do this with other countries as well. So if you looked up England and did the same thing, you'd have the Premier League at the top, you'd have the Championship underneath, etc, etc, all the way down. But there's a lot more leagues in England so the pyramid is really big. Here in the US it's a bit smaller so at the top here we've got the MLS. You guys have probably heard about that. It's the highest level of professional football here in the US. Players like Zlatan are currently playing in it for LA Galaxy. We've got Rooney over at DC United right now. So that's the top tier in the US at this current moment. So before we dive really deep into everything trial related in terms of how to go about getting a trial, how to actually conduct yourself on the day of a trial to give yourself the best chance of impressing the coaches, I just want to give you a quick overview of what the current US football system looks like so I can put into context what level my team's competing at and also give you a bit of information of the other leagues. So I've got a pyramid over here that's representing the different levels. You can do this with other countries as well. So if you did this in England, you'd see the Premier League at the top, you'd see the Championship one step below, and then it would go down quite large actually because in England you have so many different leagues so the pyramid looks really big. Here in the US there's far less professional and semi-professional leagues so the pyramid looks a lot smaller but at the top here we've got the MLS so you guys have probably heard of the MLS teams like LA Galaxy, DC United, we've got players like Zlatan and Wayne Rooney playing in it currently so that's the highest level of professional football competition here in the USA. One step below that, occupying the second tier, is the USL Championship. One step below that, in the third tier, we have the USL 1. So it's a fully professional league, but the players will be paid slightly less than they are in the USL Championship. Also included in that third tier this year is a brand new league called the MPSL Founders Cup. It's an affiliate league of the MPSL, which is the team my Rochester Lancers play in, but it is going to be a full professional league. Players are going to be able to be paid full salaries, and it's going to compete for longer periods of the year. Then you come down to that fourth tier, which is considered semi-professional, and in there you've got the USL 2, which used to be called the PDL, and then you've also got the MPSL, which is the level that I play at. So my Rochester Lancers, that's the highest level team in my city, the NPSL. We used to have a USL championship team, the Rochester Rhinos. They won the championship in 2015, and then two years later, they folded, which just goes to show the organization. There's a few kinks still in the US system, not only with not being able to promote and relegate between the leagues, but you'll also see teams popping up and folding all the time. So that's just a quick synopsis of what the US football system is currently like. I would do a whole video on talking about that, but I want to regain the focus back to today's topic, which is all about trials. So if you are looking to play at any level that I mentioned on that pyramid, below that pyramid you do have a bunch of elite amateur teams and a lot of other leagues as well that don't necessarily hold tryouts but you can contact and get a training session with the club so you would be able to do some more research on that if you wanted to and also I'm not going to talk too much about NCAA today so if you're looking to play in college I'm going to do a full separate video on how to get recruited for college because even though there are some similarities as far as the process for getting recruited for college it is a lot different 
at the same time because not only do you have to be a good player and prove yourself on the pitch but there's also a bunch of academic stuff that you need to adhere to as well to be accepted into a school so if you are looking to play in college and you want some tips and advice on that let me know below and I'll make a completely separate video that concentrates solely on getting recruited for college so as far as talking about the teams that I included in that pyramid that I showed you before they usually recruit their players from one of three ways. So usually they have an open tryout. So that's what my club had today. I'm going to keep calling it either a tryout or a trial. In England we call it a trial, but in the US it's called a tryout or a combine. So if I keep switching between the words, they all mean the exact same thing. So my team, the Rochester Lancers, today we had an open trial, which means anybody, anybody, anywhere can apply to come to this trial. So it doesn't matter if you've played in the Premier League, which I don't know why they would be coming to play in the NPSL, but hypothetically they could, or if they've never played football in their life, you can still sign up for this kind of trial. Usually there's a fee involved, you pay a $50 fee or a $100 fee, however much the club is charging. You come in and you go through a training session, you play some games, and then you, you have the shirt, as I was mentioning before, coaches come around with the clipboard, and if you impress, you'll make it to the next round. So the open trial, there is some pros and cons with it. The pros is obviously it gives an opportunity to everybody. So if you've had no experience whatsoever, you can still have the chance to be seen by some semi-professional or professional coaches just by going to the website, signing up and paying a fee. But with that notion also comes a negative. So even though it's great that everybody can get an opportunity from these open trials, it's also a negative at the same time because as I mentioned, you could have somebody there that's been playing the game for 15 years, played at a very high level, coming in to try and get a spot on the team and then you could have somebody over on the other side who literally started playing football last week which makes the level very uneven sometimes the chemistry is not there because if there's a player making certain kinds of runs that they're used to because they're experienced and then somebody who's not experienced doesn't recognize that it can break down a lot of the play and sometimes very good players can't show their best qualities in these environments but at the same time it could also work in your favor because if it's a very low level and you're a very high player it's just going to make you stand out even more and that all depends on the day of the trial at the event and you really can't predict that so because it's so unpredictable it's not always the most ideal opportunity to get signed to a team Something to bear in mind though and be cautious about when it comes to open trials, a lot of teams do use this as a good way to fundraise at the beginning of their season. So if you imagine an open trial, there's 100 players there, each of those players paid 100 bucks to be at that trial, that's just 10 grand that club's made that's just gone straight into their bank account that's going to help pay for facilities, it's going to help pay for equipment, travel, a lot of the expenses that are going to crop up during their season. They don't always have the intent of signing players from these open trials. Obviously, if you go to an open trial, you need to be especially cautious when an elite level club is holding an open trial. So here in the US, a lot of MLS clubs do have open trials at the start of their season where they charge three, 400, sometimes 500 bucks a player. And at these kinds of combines, there's often like 200, 300, 300 players so just imagine how much money those clubs are making on that day that's around 43 billion not really but it's a lot of money it's a lot of money to be raking in in one day for that club that's obviously going to help them through the season and if you see these combines happen usually they might pick one maybe two guys to come to then an invite combine and at the end of it, most of the time, players do not get offered a contract if they came through the open trial system at the elite level. However, if you're looking at the lower levels, like on the pyramid there, if you're looking at levels two, three, and four, a lot of players do end up getting signed from these open trial situations. So just bear in mind the kind of club you're going to. If it's a top level club, they have their own scouting system. They have their own ways of recruiting players, especially the MLS. They're looking at D1 players who are playing in the top 10 teams in the nation. They've already got their eyes on the kinds of players they want to be bringing in and they have their own things like the MLS draft to select players. They're not picking up their players from these open combines. So definitely something to bear in mind when considering open trials. So now let's talk about a second type of trial that you might encounter during your playing career. So there's something called an invite only trial. So once you've already gone through the open trials, sometimes you might get invited back to an invite only only trial if you impressed. So an invite only trial, unlike the open trial where it's available to everyone, the invite only trial is all in the name there, is only exclusive to players who have been invited specifically by the club to attend. So you can't register online for it or anything like that. The club has to actually invite you whether through email or if you went to the open trial they might let you know that you've been invited back for an invite only trial. The difference between the two is that the invite only trial is going to be a lot higher level 
than the open trial because these are players that the club has hand selected seen potential in to compete for a spot on the team so you can expect a much higher level everybody there is going to have some kind of experience because usually they won't take players without experience into an invite only trial they want to see that you've played at a good level competed at a good level now they're having a look at you to see if you're ready for that next level usually with an invite only trial you're not paying any kind of fees because the club is genuinely interested in seeing you perform and they want to know if you're a good candidate to add to their squad for that season but everything else will be a very similar format to the open trial they'll probably give you a numbered shirt once again they're going to put you through some drills some playing activities and then end with a full match game and they're going to walk around with their clipboards and if they see some potential in you they're going to make those comments they're all going to come together at the end of that trial and if they're all picking out the same players they will probably invite them to the next step which is pre-season so let's say you've attended an open trial you've impressed the coach has invited you to the invite only trial you've impressed once once again, what might often happen is the coach may then invite you into preseason with the team. So the actual team will be there amongst some other trialists who are also at the invite trial or they've selected them from other areas to come in and actually train with the current squad. So this is an opportunity for the coach to see how you compete against the other players he already has and most of these players might have actually competed in the league before. So they're going to be experienced professionals or semi-professionals and now he wants to see your level compared to theirs to see if you can handle it. As far as the format of these opportunities, it's obviously however the team wants to conduct their preseason. You might have to do some fitness there's going to be a lot of drills maybe some friendlies in preseason as well where they play against other clubs and you trialists if you're in there you might actually have the opportunity to play in these matches to see how you compete even though you're not signed yet you can actually play in preseason friendlies and it's not uncommon for teams to have three four or five preseason games before the beginning of their season and through that time over the course of four or five weeks they start weeding out players that they're not going to sign so the longer you stay into preseason the better your chances of actually being signed to the team. Then obviously if you make it all the way through preseason and you've continued to impress, the coach may then sit you down and offer you a contract or he wants to invite you to sign as a player to that team. Then you're on the team, bada bing, bada boom, done. Obviously that negotiation phase is going to be slightly different for full-time professionals than it will be for semi-professionals. If you're in a full-time professional club, that's where you may want to think about getting an agent to help you negotiate that contract to make sure everything's legitimate. But that's a completely separate topic. If you want me to go into detail about agents, my experience with agents, how they can help, what things to look out for with an agent, I can do that in a separate video, but let me know in the comment section below. I'm just trying to give you an overview of what the usual trial system looks like. So that's basically the three most common ways that teams recruit their players players through a trial system. Obviously you have those scenarios where players just transfer from one team to the other and bypass all the trial situations completely. That's more common at the higher levels. You'll see that in the Premier League. Obviously teams aren't having these invite trials or anything like that. Players are just transferring from one club to the other because they've got a certain reputation. They've already proven themselves to be a world-class player. So they just sign them right away. They're not going through any kind of trial or anything like that. You'll get that in the MLS too. And some USL clubs also do it if a player has proven themselves at that league level. But for the most of us, we're gonna to have to go through these trials at some point in order to get an opportunity to play at the next level. So how do we go about actually getting these opportunities? So there's one of two ways that is the most effective for actually getting these trials. So one is just finding them online and registering. You can search in Google, open trials in your area. You can look at specific club websites to see if they have any dates lined up for open trials. And that's just an easy way you can sign up. You don't need any experience or anything like that you just pay a fee and you're automatically involved in that trial on the day another way is to actually email clubs specifically so you go on the website you find a contact whether it be their media contact any email you can find and ask them to forward this email to the coach have some information about yourself requesting a trial at that club but if you are sending an email, you've got to make sure you have these two things. These are absolutely essential. There is no way around them whatsoever. The first thing you need is a good quality CV or resume listing all your experiences as a footballer. So on the CV, you need to have a bio, so your name, your age, your weight, your height, your position, everything about you. And then you also need to list all your clubs that you've played for, including any awards you might have got. Record any information on that CV 
EV that's going to be relevant for that coach to look at when it comes to your playing history. If you need some advice on how to actually write a football CV, I can give you some more tips, but there is a lot of information online. It's pretty much like you would write for a resume or a CV for any kind of job. So when you go for a job, you need a CV or a resume with all your experiences to show that you're qualified to take on the position that you're applying for. The exact same thing applies in football as well. This is just a document to show that you have played football for many years, that you have experience, that you've performed at certain levels and you're ready to take on this new level. Also included in your email when contacting coaches, you absolutely need match footage, especially in the modern age. You need match footage. And there's so many ways that you can film games. There's so many cameras. You have cameras on your phone and everything like that. You need to have some sort of match footage in order to show the coach your abilities, your qualities. Otherwise, he's not going to be able to make an assessment and know if you're somebody that is interested in bringing in for a trial or into preseason with his club. So this is absolutely essential. There are no ways around it. You need to ask somebody to come film your games. Whatever it takes, you need to get a good quality chunk of match footage. I would recommend about three to four minutes in length of all your best bits. Three to four minutes is about the maximum length you should be sending. Coaches aren't going to stick around for much longer than that and it wants to have all your best qualities in there. Most coaches are going to be able to figure it out after just a couple of minutes. So make sure all your best stuff is in there, about three to four minutes. Don't make your videos long. If they're 15 minutes, coaches aren't going to stick around for that full length video. Condense everything into a shorter clip and then if that coach requests more footage, you send them more. But at first, send them a three to four minute clip and another tip as well, make sure it doesn't have any kind of cheesy music or anything that's going to be distracting from them watching you play. There's nothing worse than getting a video clip and it's just a really annoying song and I know that sounds small and petty but if it distracts them from watching you play it's going to be a negative as far as them evaluating you as a player for their team. Also when it comes to your video make sure it's actually official match highlights. It's not just you kicking down the park with some friends or in a training session or something like that. It needs to be actual match footage in a league somewhere. So your goal is to play on the highest local team that you possibly Possibly can. That's just going to set you apart because if you go into these trials, it's usually a higher level than where you're currently at. Your goal is to bridge that gap between where you're at and where you currently want to be as close as possible. If you go into a second division club and the highest level you've ever played is 10th division, it's not going to look good on you. But if you go into that second division club and you've played at a fifth division or a fourth division, it just shows a bit more credibility in terms of the level that you've already played at. The coach is going to take you a little bit more seriously. So make sure you're aspiring to be on the best club in your area you possibly can be. So now you've got your good quality CV and you also have your good quality footage and now it's time to email the coaches and you need to be very careful that you're emailing coaches in a very professional and polite way. You're not going to send them this big long sub story of how you've always dreamed of being a professional player, how if you got this chance it would change your life and your family's life and you're begging them to let you in and train with the team. You're not going to email them anything like that. It's not going to reflect good on you. These coaches aren't there to do you a favor. They're there because it's their job and they're looking for the best players they possibly we can bring into the club to help them compete for a championship. That's it. It's going to be a very professional communication between you and the coach. So here's an example of a letter you could write to a coach. So you're going to start the top line with dear coach and then you're going to put their last name. Then you're going to start a new paragraph and this is where you introduce yourself. You're going to say my name is Michael Cunningham. You're obviously going to put your own name. I am from England. I've played at this level and I'm looking for the opportunity to play at a higher level in the future. New paragraph. I'm just inquiring to see if you offer trials or if it would be possible to join you in a training session so you can evaluate me as a potential player for your squad. Next paragraph, I've attached my CV and video for you to watch. Next paragraph, thank you so much for your time and consideration. Please let me know if we can chat about this further. Signed, your name. Something clear, concise, very professional, to the point, and you also involve that information. You don't need to go on about your position or anything else because it's all in your CV. You don't need to tell them about you as a player, how you're this amazing winger, you've got all these tricks and things. Everything's going to be in your highlight tape. You don't need to speak for yourself. You allow your CV and the video to do all that for you. You've got your CV, you've got your good quality video, you've sent it out to a bunch of coaches, and now you've started to get a couple of responses inviting you to trials, or you found an open trial that you can attend. So, how do you approach that trial in order to give yourself the best chance of impressing the coach? Now, I'm going to tell you something that every single coach I've ever met 
will tell you what they expect from a trial. When you go to a trial and you're giving your first impression to that coach, they have never seen you play before at this time, you want to play simple and quick. Every coach I've ever met always says simple and quick. If you think about the game of football, and I'm not talking about highlights, even players like Messi, Neymar, even though if you watch their YouTube clips and their highlights, it's easy to think that every single time they get the ball, they're doing something incredible with it. They're driving forward, beating three or four players. If you actually watch a full length 90 minute match, 99% of the time it's passing and moving. Passing and moving, getting into new spaces to receive the ball. Good clean first touch, finding your teammate quickly. Only maybe 1-2% of the game and only by a select couple of players involves dribbling, shooting from 40 yards. These are moments that happen over the course of a season. When you're watching Messi's highlights, there's a 5 minute clip of all his dribbles, but that's happening over the course of a season. I know Messi does dribble a lot than other players, but it's over the course of a season. It's not happening for 90% of the match. If you watch Messi, he's distributing the ball, he's checking over his shoulder, he's playing one, two touches, he's playing the ball quickly, and then he picks his moments to then drive forward. And that's what you need to be doing. You need to show these coaches that you have all the fundamentals at a high level, that you're able to receive the ball and distribute it consistently and not give that ball away. And then when the opportunity arises, so if you're getting through on goal, then you're gonna take your shot. If you're able to beat one player to get in a better position to cross the ball or to get a shot off, then you're gonna take it. But but for the majority of that trial, you're going to be playing quick and you're going to be playing simple, making right decisions, making sure you're putting in a lot of work, a lot of effort, getting into spaces to receive the ball. But the most important thing is that you're a team player trying to actually help your team out during those situations. And the good thing is if you do get invited back, which will give yourself the best chance if you do play effectively every time you're on the ball and not making silly decisions, dribbling at the back, taking shots from 40 yards when there was a player in a better position or anything like that. If you do get invited back, the more chance you have in front of that coach, the more opportunity you're gonna to have to show your other qualities as well. But the more you do the right things, the longer the coach is gonna keep you there and then he will discover more about you as a player the longer he keeps you there. On top of your playing ability, you need to come with a very positive attitude. So sometimes you really can't control what's going on in the trial, especially if you're at one of these open trials where the level might not be that good. Sometimes the passes aren't connecting right, everything's going wrong, but you need to keep your cool, keep your head, and always have a positive attitude. I've seen some very, very good players, really phenomenal technical players, get rejected based on that attitude alone. If you're out there getting frustrated, head in your hands, shouting at other players, it's just negativity that the coach is gonna pick up on, and he doesn't wanna bring that into his squad. Negativity is like poison, if you bring that into a squad, the other players start getting negative and then the team starts to fall apart and the chemistry is ruined. So go there with a positive attitude no matter what happens. And that also goes for your work rate as well. So even if technically you're having an off day, maybe you didn't connect a couple of passes, maybe you shanked a couple of shots, make sure your work rate is always at 100% because even when you're not technically at 100% for that day, you can make up for that with your work rate as well. So if you take a bad touch, your work rate can still get you onto that ball. So the main three things that you need to bring to a trial out is play simple and quick, a positive attitude, and a 100% work rate. If you do those three things, you're putting yourself in the best opportunity to be seen by that coach and invited back for another trial. So I know I've spoken a lot in this video, but hopefully you brought a notepad along to write some of this stuff down. It's all very valuable information, and the mistakes I'm sharing with you are mistakes that I've actually done myself. So you're learning from somebody who's actually been through this, made these mistakes, seen the negative effect they have, and someone who's actually learned from them and able to improve their trial performance and actually got signed to teams in the end. So feel free to take some of this advice down, watch the video back, write some notes, but I'm gonna leave you with two really important pieces of advice. The first piece of advice is opportunity does not come knocking on your door. And what I mean by that is don't expect clubs to find you all the time. You need to put yourself out there, you need to be able to market yourself, you need to reach out and make yourself known. I know we've all seen the movie Goal where Santiago Munez is playing Sunday League in Los Angeles and Glenn Foy comes along because his son's playing and he spots Santiago playing on this pitch, notices the skill and then in a couple of weeks he's playing for Newcastle United 
celebrated in the Premier League. It's a great story, but there's a reason that's a movie because it's not a great representation of what actually happens in real life. So I hope that doesn't shatter anyone's dreams that thought they were going to play for their local club and then somebody's going to come along, see them play, and then they're going to be in a Premier League club in a couple of weeks. That's really not what happens. It's not a moment of luck. It's about consistently putting yourself out there, trying to get on as many coaches' radar as possible. So that's attending trials, sending emails with your footage out there, playing on the highest level team you possibly can in your area, email as many clubs as you possibly can. The more emails you send, the more chances of you getting a response from one of those clubs. And my final piece of advice, and this is the most important, that if you go to a trial and you are rejected or you're taken on and actually signed to the team, that decision is solely on the coach's opinion alone. So I know it's very easy to go to a trial and if you get rejected, you think you're a bad player, but you never know the reason for that rejection at that moment. There's so many different factors that go into actually being selected for that squad. It could simply be that the coach doesn't like your style of play and that's absolutely fine. There's gonna be another coach out there that will really appreciate your style of play. And for one coach, you might not make their team, but for another coach, you might be the starting guy, their absolute superstar. And there's times where a coach is just looking for a specific position. You might go in there as a winger and the coach is looking for a center back. You might have a great performance, but the coach just isn't looking for a player that position he's looking for something very specific and you don't meet that criteria on that day there's just nothing you can do about it so make sure you're not putting all your eggs in one basket thinking you're just going to go to one trial and it's going to be successful most players have to go to multiple trials suffer many rejections before they actually get that first contract so all you've got to do is go to these trials doing the very best you can always trying to make the right decisions as best as you possibly can and sometimes there are things you can control so make sure you control them like your work rate we've already spoken about this and there's a lot of things you can't control and you've just got to let those go and then you've just got to be accepting and you've got to be face to face with the outcome whatever it may be so if you get signed great if you don't you move on you keep training and you get ready for that next opportunity believe me i've been to many tryouts where i thought i've played really well done the very best i can and i haven't got signed i've also been to trials where it's not gone great for me but at the same time i got signed at the end of it you really can't predict how it's going to end up and the result of it so you just got to do your best on the day and just allow whatever happens to happen. But that's actually going to be it for today's video. I know there was a lot of information to take away from this one, but so much good quality stuff. And believe me, this is all from experience as well. So I'm just trying to impart that on you guys so that you're better prepared going into it because a lot of this stuff I didn't know. I've made a lot of these mistakes and I had to learn from them the hard way. So hopefully you can pick up some new information. I know there's so much more information I could probably cover as well. And I didn't get around to it in today's video. I can only think of so much off the top of my head. So if you have any more questions in relation to trials, just drop that in the comment section below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Also, if you'd rather email me privately, if you're not comfortable asking in front of other people, you can also direct message me on Instagram and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. I get a lot of messages, I know, but I will try and get back to you if possible. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. I know it was a lot of information, not the most entertaining, but this stuff is really gonna help you. So make sure you're looking back at this video, writing some of the tips down and actually applying stuff into the future of your football career. So when you're emailing coaches, doing all the right things and when you're attending these trials, trying to do the right stuff. But if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you smash that like button, hit the subscribe button for weekly training videos and I will see you guys in my next video.